So in the latest version of ATEM Software Control, we were given the ability to do some more advanced audio routing on our outputs, putting things like MADI down audio channels three and four on our OXs, for example. But what if I told you that's only just scratching the surface of what's actually available now? Now, they've actually snuck in the ability to give us full audio routing to grab whatever audio source to whatever output and on a per port basis. This is pretty cool. We're gonna show you how to do it today. So let me show you what's actually been announced and what's available now. Now, here's the HM software, software control, which we're used to. Now on some of the switches, or like the Constellation 4K series and the TV Studio HD and 4K 8s, we have the ability and this audio tab. We can go through here and we can go on our programs three and four and we can adjust what input we want to go to there from MADI or from our SDR inputs, three, four, five, and six. Now, this is only doing it for every port. So three and four, if you make an adjustment here, that's gonna be sending out all the ports all the time. And program one and two is always gonna be programmed. You're not able to do anything there. But what they've actually done is gone through and in the XML, when you're saving the file, they've actually shown all of the different options that are available to you. And you can adjust that XML, load it back in there, and then you will get full routing options per port which is really, really cool. Now, this is something I've actually been wanting for a long time now, and I've always thought that it was possible because when we go into our uh, audio settings, they have the ability to do a mix minus on all of these outputs. So technically in the box, they have the ability to put different audios through those different channels. So it's, it's always been there, but I've been talking to the engineers and saying, hey, we really need this feature so that we can actually do things that we can't do at the moment. So let me give you some great use cases of what's gonna be available now. We have the ability to say you've got a, uh, a Zoom call uh, with a contributor coming in and you wanna run a mix minus to that Zoom call. Uh, say you're running your audio from your number one camera and you're talking to a guest on Zoom on another, on another device. Say you've got a cam link or a major well plugged into that and you wanna be able to get that microphone audio to the guests. Now, historically we've had to use embedders or another audio source or some way of doing that. But now what we can actually do is say camera one plugged into your switcher, you can send that down uh, output 10, for example, on your constellation. And now that your guests will actually get that audio through channels one, two on that aux. Here's another example. Say you've got a whole bunch of Hyperdex or a ATEM Mini Extreme, which you're doing some ISO records on and you wanna be able to send the audio from that source or that camera down to that hyperdeck. Right now, we're used to only being able to have program going down one and two. Uh, now, what I have done before I found this was using channels three and four, five and six and sending the audio there and then in post kind of grabbing those bits. But now what we can do is go input one, is going to hyperdeck one, and that audio is going straight to the hyperdeck. We're not, we're ignoring program, and we can adjust the other ones as we see fit as well. Uh, in a replay situation, say you've got a camera coming in and it's got a top mic on there. Uh, if you're running to EVS or even Blackmagic's new uh, replay system, you'll be able to grab the audio and say put the top mic down channels three and four going to that hyperdeck. So when they're doing the replay, the program might be coming through or even a separate program, which the audio engineer has mixed for you for those replays. And then when you're running the replay, the audio engineer can then bring up the level of the top mic, for example, so that you're having that separate audio for that. There's a lot of different things that can be done with this. So let's dive in and show you how to actually do that. All right, so first things first, is I wanna show you what is actually happening in the XML when we save things. So in our software control, like we're used to, if we go to a save as, and we put our tests one audio into our routing folder, for example. Now I'm just gonna select none, just so it just cleans up the XML a little bit, just so we can see this a little better, and go just audio mapping. And I'm gonna hit save. Actually, I'm not gonna hit save just for now because I've already got one which I've made. Now that made an XML. So I'm gonna go into Atom, which is just a easy, um, way of seeing the, the code, but you can use, load this in any sort of text editor on your device. So this is the audio output section for what we're looking at here. Now there's a whole bunch of random numbers and random things, but I'll try and explain it a little in a way that's gonna make life easy. So in the output ID, 
we have a whole bunch of outputs IDs here, and it's also going to actually show us what that is in English. So output ID 56, uh, 656, etc., is actually MADI 1, so the MADI 1 port on the Constellation 8K and 4K, uh, channel 1, and outputs 1 and 2. Now, the audio routing can only be done in stereo pairs, well, pairs of audio. Um, but this gives us an idea of what's uh, available. So what we're used to is MADI 1 is a pair of audio, MADI 2, MADI 3. So these are all the outputs. And then the source ID is where with what actually is routed to that. So this should be a fairly stock standard um, way of what we're looking at. So if I run down to, say, our OXs, for example, uh, so an OX1, um, OX1, 1 and 2, is that's seemingly going to be programmed. Um, and 3 and 4, I've done some routing of the MADI, I think, down 3 and 4. Now, before you freak out, there's actually a full list showing what each number is to make life easier here. So, and you can see zero, which is going to be nothing, is going down five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. So, as you can see, we have full audio control from aux one uh, all the way all through auxes and all of the channels per on a per port basis. So, even fifteen, sixteen, you can adjust the comms there. So, say you want to run comms from another thing and not use it through the switcher, you can actually route that in from another source. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom here, we're now going to look at the source audio names. So um, ID 0 is no audio. Um, ID 65536 is going to be SDI input number 1, channels 1 and 2 on that input. And 3 and 4 and 15, 13, 14 and 15 and 16. Now, on the input side, you can't get all of the audio channels. In terms of routing, you only have 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 13 to 16. Um, but, you know, it's kind of hard to complain. We've got so much already. So these are all of the uh, different inputs we have. So that's inputs 1 to 40, the microphone, the TRS on the switcher, and now we have all of the MADI, 32 channels of MADI as well. Another fun thing is we actually also have all the media players. Now, this is where actually things get really interesting because I do a lot of jobs where I'm using the stinger inside the constellation. I want to send that to the audio guy so that they can send that to our guests and all that kind of stuff. Historically, we've only been able to get the audio output on the, on the MADI when it's in 8K mode. But now that we have all of these channels available, I can route that to an aux, I can route that to a MADI output, and now the audio guy has those options available. So huge win. Even just that alone has made my life infinitely easier. Uh, we have all our talkbacks, our program, and also all these aux mixes, which I'm guessing are going to be the mix minus mixes that are built into the switcher. I still don't really get those. I haven't actually played with it a whole lot, but those are all there as well. So the idea being that if you want to grab a source, you grab the ID and you put it up into the top section. So let me go and grab uh, a source. Now, before you freak out, there actually is an easier way of doing this, but I just wanted to show you what is actually happening in the XML here so we can go through and get a better idea of how we do this. So I've got audio currently happening on input channel 25. Um, so I'll grab the, that audio. I'm going to copy that here. I'm going to scroll up to the top, and my aux 20 output is going to a hyperdeck. Now, in the corner here, you can see that there's currently four channels of audio going to the hyperdeck, just so we can see these different channels. So, if I go to aux 20 and then 5 and 6, which currently has nothing, if I highlight this and paste in that number, I save this, go back to the software control, and now restore. I can go to that audio, uh, restore the audio mapping, and now you can see we have audio popping up on channels five and five and six down the bottom there. Super cool. And this is only going to that one port. This is not going to all of them like we would normally see if we were to do it up here. So I mentioned there's an easier way of doing this. Let me show you how it's done. So there's a community member on the Blackmagic forum named Roman Pekarek, I apologize if I got your name wrong there, who has gone through and actually made an online free XML editor so you can actually have a graphical interface of what's happening here. Let me show you that now. So uh, I'll put the link down below for this website. And thanks, Roman. This is an awesome tool 
for being able to do this. this. This only just came out, I think like today or yesterday at the time of recording, and is planning on doing more things to make this even easier. But this gives us the fundamental core parts of what we need. So in, in the username and password, there is, there is, there's no login system. This is purely so that you can uh, have your saves there ready to go. So I've just made a number two and I'm gonna hit submit. Now this is where you upload your XML that you've exported from your ATEM. So I'll go there and go to my test routing and now I'm gonna submit this. So this is the interface that we're looking at. It will tell you what switcher you're running and what mode. And these are all of your outputs. So you got MADI 1. Now just a note that if you're running the 4K series of MADIs, you can only use, you can only adjust the outputs of MADI 1, not MADI 2. But again, not mad about that because we can adjust everything else. So on MADI 1, we can see all of our MADI 1s and what inputs are currently going to those. Uh, we can go through our oxes and we can adjust these on a per port basis. So this is a nice, pretty interface of how we do that. So we were looking at aux 20. We put input 25 uh, down that ports five and six. So you can go through and see all of your inputs which are available and different MADI options, media players, all that fun stuff. So this is a really cool tool to be able to actually have a visual of what you're doing because obviously in the code it gets a little bit messy. So another fun thing about all this is that historically we've only had the ability to output MADI from um, the, the inputs 1 to 30. Now we have the ability to grab audio from some of the later ones. So for example on input 30 if I actually want to grab input 40 I now have that ability to do that which is really, really cool. Now, obviously things can get a little bit messy here. This is potentially quite dangerous because you could be messing with your routing and sending the wrong audio to where you want to go. Um, so talking with engineers, this is why that they didn't actually release this in the software for people to actually use freely because chances are most people who don't know what they're doing are just going to break it and they're going to have a bad day doing it. But uh, for those who do know what they're doing, this is a very cool tool. So one thing that I want to mention as well, as I was doing some testing with this, there is a way that you can kind of break your outputs, specifically on outputs one and two, on audio channels one and two on your SDI outputs. Here's a classic example. So you've got your um, Hyperdeck here. So this is Hyperdeck two, for example. I want to send a camera direct to that Hyperdeck. So camera three direct is now going to the hyperdeck and you can see down the bottom, the audio is still routing as we were before. Um, say I want to go into here and grab the audio from, from that one. So I'll go to aux 20 and on my program one, two, I'm going to adjust this now to be input three. So this is coming from the, the camera itself in this example. Uh, in this example, it's just going to turn off, but I'll export the XML. It will save that. I will go in and restore that save that I've just done and then grab the audio mapping as per usual. And now we restore that. And now you can actually see that actually there is a, a top mic app happening on that camera at the moment. So you can see that uh, audio channels one and two is coming from a different source, slightly out of time. Um, but beside the point. So that route has worked. So we've got out of our aux number 20, um, that is sending that audio. But where things get interesting is if I was to now adjust my aux video send, so what's going to that aux, so keep an eye on the audio down there, all three are different feeds. If I was to say, do change to this one, for example, now that audio has gone back to program. So this is quite important if you're wanting to adjust your audio from outputs one and two, make sure that you're doing this after you've done all your video routing. And if you make an adjustment, so now that I made the adjustment, if I wanna go through and go, oh, I've broken that, I can go through and restore that same file again. And, and now if I hit restore, that original route has now come through. So something to keep in mind if you are adjusting your outputs one and two for your mix minus or your, for your ISO records to make sure that you do your video first and then try and do your audio afterwards or just restore that audio that you've 
major changes too. But I hope you can see just how powerful this really is. This is a really cool feature now. It's essentially turned our switches into almost routers and we can route things from whatever we want to wherever we want. And for those who are actually um, not necessarily looking for a constellation for a switcher, if you're looking for a, for a multi-view, for a um, uh, sample rate converter and an audio router or audio embedder, this could actually be a cost-effective way of doing that for a lot of different channels. So yeah, I'm super excited about this. I'm now using in all my productions. I recently went through and did a lot of work in trying to do some audio embeds for my things, but I'm basically gonna get rid of them now because I can send the audio from my audio console through the MADI out the port that I need it to be. So I hope that helps. This is a slightly different one, but I hope it gave you some ideas of what it could do for your productions. Um, now, at the time of recording, this only works on the Constellation 4K series and the HD 8 and the 4K 8s, uh, but I have heard that this uh, should be coming to some of the other switches as well, because um, we saw that it came to the 4K 8 first and then the uh, Constellation 4ME HD and the 4ME, sorry, the 4ME 4K and the 4ME 8K. So it seems like they're starting to roll this out onto some of the other bigger switches, which is really cool. Um, what I'd love to see down the track is um, if this can be done on, say, an 18 Mini with the ability to now do USB outs on and adjust what is going to that USB out on the, the ASM Minis, which is coming out soon. Maybe we'll see audio output there as well. But anyway, I hope this has been useful for you. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you'll be running yourself. But yeah, until next time, I will see you on the next one. Cheers.